In mid-1954, the Atomic Energy Commission and Atomics International entered into a program to study and improve the technology associated with the sodium graphite type of nuclear reactors. The technical feasibility of this approach to economical nuclear power is experimentally demonstrated through the construction and operation of the sodium reactor experiment. The facility is located in the Santa Susana Mountains, 30 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles. It incorporates a 20,000 thermal kilowatt reactor, having the basic design features of a full-scale central station sodium graphite reactor. Liquid sodium serves as the coolant and heat transfer medium. Graphite is used as moderator. The arrangement of major reactor components is shown by illustration. The stainless steel core tank is 19 feet deep and 11 feet in diameter. It is located beneath ground level. Surrounding the core tank is a cast steel thermal neutron shield a secondary tank to maintain the sodium level above the fuel elements in the event of a core tank rupture, thermal insulation, a steel vault liner, and a concrete vault. An overhead view shows the graphite moderator and reflector units, which are contained in 119 canned assemblies. The inner 55 are pierced axially by coolant channels within which the fuel elements may be suspended. Liquid sodium coolant flows into the reactor at the bottom of the core tank. From there, it flows past the hot fuel elements to an upper pool. To remove this heat, the radioactive coolant is pumped through a primary loop and returned to the core tank for recirculation. The heat from the sodium in the primary loop is transferred by a heat exchanger to a secondary loop, which is non-radioactive. The heat from the secondary loop can be exhausted to the atmosphere by a sodium-to-air heat exchanger, or it can be utilized in a steam generator. The steam drives a conventional turbo generator for the production of electricity. Output capacity is rated at 7,500 electrical kilowatts. The, a closely packed array of hexagonal graphite blocks, canned in zirconium, forms the reactor moderator. Fabrication of the moderator units will be shown in detail. The blocks were machined from 300-pound logs. They were first rough cut, then smooth finish. Each operation required a single pass under the cutter. Tolerance across the flats was held to one ten thousandth of an inch. This graphite exceeds the extremely high purity standards established for reactor applications. No impurities of any significance can be measured by the conventional chemical or spectrographic methods. Personnel working with the graphite wore uniforms and gloves, which were laundered in a boron-free soap. And all tools, gauges, and fixtures were washed with alcohol as insurance against contamination. The graphite was stored at all times in aluminum foil. The zirconium cans, which enclose the graphite moderator blocks, were fabricated from six separate longitudinal panels. The formation of each panel was completed in a single break operation. This is a 60-degree bend. The formed panels were machined to the specified width. This operation was critical, since it determined the tolerance on the completed moderator can. Tolerance across the flats was one twenty-five thousandth of an inch. 
After machining, the panels were cleaned by micro sandblasting. The final step before assembly. A Heliarc welding stake was employed for longitudinal welding. The seams were fused together without the use of filler rod. This assured neater joints with a minimum of contamination. Dimples which were rolled into the panels during fabrication ensure a thin, flat channel between adjacent can walls. This space permits heat removal by the circulating reactor coolant. The bottom end caps were heliarc welded in place. Argon under pressure within the central tube provided an inert atmosphere behind the weld. Moderator can end cap welds were investigated through mid-1955. Ten-inch sections of the cans were prepared for these tests. The object was to study the possibility of buckling or cracking of the head welds due to thermal stress, which might be encountered during reactor shutdown. The thermal stress was simulated in this test by mechanical cycling. The can was immersed in sodium and evacuated. Sodium temperature was maintained at 950 degrees Fahrenheit. Any break in the welds would be detected by a sodium leak indicator. Early failures were observed, which led to an improvement in head design. Later heads have survived cycling tests equivalent to nearly eight years of operation in the sodium reactor experiment. The main purpose of the moderator can is to isolate the graphite from the sodium coolant. A leaking can would allow absorption of sodium by the graphite, causing excessive neutron losses. Each can was sealed, evacuated, and all welds helium leak tested. The welds were also x-rayed to check for porosity and contamination. Any faulty portions were marked, re-welded, and x-rayed again. A horizontal graphite loading jig facilitates final assembly of the moderator elements. Three graphite blocks comprise the moderator element for each can. A graphite indexing plug at the junction of adjacent blocks prevents rotation. The total weight of the complete canned moderator assembly is about 760 pounds. After loading, the top cap was welded in place and x-rayed, and the complete moderator unit given a final leak test. There are four control elements in the core located as shown diagrammatically in this overhead view. Each element is self-contained in a sealed thimble assembly which extends from the top of the upper shield to a point just below the core. The poison column is made up of a series of 18 boron nickel alloy rings suspended on a pull tube. The pull tube is raised and lowered by a motor drive system located just above the top shield. Studies were made to determine the optimum clearance between control rod rings and the tube within which they operate. An electrically heated graphite coil was employed to bring the test rings to SRE operating temperatures. Various ring sizes were tested to establish the best size for free movement and dissipation of the expected heat load. These rings were thermal cycled in another series of tests to investigate the physical changes which might occur under operating temperatures. They were cycled 500 times for a maximum of 1500 degrees Fahrenheit down to 700 degrees. 
with a gradient across the rings of 300 to 400 degrees. These tests indicated that the changes in size would be well within acceptance limits. A grid plate near the bottom of the core tank supports and locates the moderator assemblies. It was fabricated from type 304 stainless steel and is one and a half inches thick. The smooth finishing of the moderator can spacer holes is shown here. A pedestal at the bottom of each moderator can fits into these holes to support the can and position it precisely. These holes space the lower ends of the moderator cans and fuel elements on an 11-inch triangular lattice. The core tank is 19 feet deep and 11 feet in diameter. Made of 304 stainless steel, it has a wall thickness of an inch and a half. The bottom head was formed cold and specially heat treated to maintain the required close tolerances. Prior to fabrication, all material was ultrasonically inspected for internal laminations and voids. The sides of the tank were built of three ring sections, each welded in place. All welds were given dye penetrant and x-ray inspection. Surrounding the core tank is the thermal shield. Its function is to absorb most of the heat due to gamma rays and neutrons and to protect the concrete shield from thermal damage. It was fabricated from 1030 carbon steel melted in an electric steel furnace. The complete shield was made up of seven individually cast rings. Each ring was fully annealed to remove stresses in the casting and then was machined to the specified five and a half inch thickness. The top ring is 29 inches high. The remaining rings are each 35 inches high. Outside diameter is 12 and a half feet, with the tolerance held to a plus or minus 1 32nd of an inch on both inside and outside diameters. To allow free expansion and contraction during reactor shutdown, these rings are not welded to each other. Stainless steel bellows seal the tops of the core tank and outer tank. They permit vertical expansion of the tanks, but prevent escape of sodium vapor and helium from the core area. Total weight with concrete and plugs is 75 tons. The sodium pumps are modified hot oil pumps designed for a high temperature service in oil refineries. The principal modifications consist of vertical mounting and the addition of frozen sodium seals at the shaft and at the case. This pump will deliver 1,285 gallons a minute against a 130 foot sodium head. The intermediate heat exchangers employ a shell and tube counterflow arrangement designed in a U shape. This configuration conserves space and minimizes thermal stresses. All components requiring special cooling are served by a system which circulates liquid tetralin, a material which does not chemically react with sodium. The cold traps, sodium pump seals, top shield, concrete cavity liner, and fuel storage cells are a few of the components serviced by the tetralin coolant system. A leak test is conducted on coolant piping. A fuel handling cask is provided for loading and unloading fuel elements from the core. 
An attached control panel, shown here as it is being wired, permits the operator to position the cask over the specified plugs for fuel loading and unloading. A full-scale mock-up of the fuel handling system, excluding the lead shielding, has been checked out on the test tower. The fuel hoist and electrical interlocks were operated through a series of tests in which fuel elements were raised and lowered an equivalent length of the core. Shown in this film was the fabrication and testing of major components for the sodium reactor experiment. It is anticipated that the experience gained from this fabrication, assembly, and operation will permit major improvements in reactor technology. This information will be incorporated into improved designs for full-scale sodium graphite power plants.